This is Daily Neo Pronouns number one on October 18th, 2022. This example will use may, mer, mims, merself, and zay, zame, zir, and zame self pronouns. These pronoun sets were generated using a random neo pronoun generator and are pronouns I've never seen or used before. This is to demonstrate how prono neo pronouns are used and how easy they are to use once you get used to it, even with pronouns you're unfamiliar with. I will make another video later ex explaining it better. This is just a live example of them in use. This short story was written in 15 minutes and 44 seconds. Randomly generated neo pronouns, may, mer, mims, merself. May listened with half an ear to the rain that was pouring down on the roof like a never ending drum. This was what May got for complaining about it being too quiet to sleep the night before. All of nature had taken it as a personal insult. Mim's familiar, Kyan, was draped across Mim's throat in their favorite light gray form, filling Mim's nose with the familiar musk of ferret as they snored. How Zay could sleep with the rain pounding against the thankfully solid metal roof, May couldn't understand, but at least one of them was getting any sleep. If May stayed awake any longer, tomorrow was going to suck. The breeze that swept in through what was being used as a doorway was chilled and slightly damp, and it was only the long tunnel that led to it that stopped Murr from getting soaking wet. May was just glad the wooden pallets May was using as a floor were tall enough to keep Mim's sleeping bag and pillow off the ground. If May had tried to sleep in the treehouse May had found earlier, this night would have been a lot worse. As though it had heard Mim's thoughts, a bolt of lightning struck across the sky, blindingly visible past the long tunnel to the door, followed swiftly by a crash of thunder that sounded like it was directly overhead. May didn't know how safe they actually were, huddled inside this wooden shed thing, but at least they were both off the ground and not up in a tree. It was a good thing Kyan had convinced Mur to sleep in here instead. Kyan's twitched slightly in their sleep and snorted a little, but didn't wake up. At least Zay was keeping Mim's neck warm, May thought to herself. May didn't know how long the storm was going to last, but May hoped it would be over soon. It didn't help that May was cold and had piled Mim's sleeping bag over Mim's folded legs to try and keep warmer. How Kyan wasn't freezing just sleeping on top of Mim's neck, May didn't know. Maybe that fur was even warmer than it looked. Another flash of lightning, thankfully further away, and another rumble of thunder. The rain continued to pound down. The only source of light besides the flashes of lightning was Mim's lucky glow stick, which still glowed all these years later, and May didn't know how. It hadn't seemed special when May got it, it hadn't even been particularly bright. But after the thing, it had gotten even gotten brighter purple, and now glowed all the time, almost bright enough that May hardly ever needed an actual lantern. It was inconvenient sometimes, if they were trying to hide, but May always shoved it into a bag or inside Mim's shoe if that happened. Sometimes May worried that it was slowly poisoning them with radiation or something, but May assumed that if that were the case, they would have started showing symptoms by now. Or maybe not. May didn't know how radiation worked at all, or hardly even what it was. It was definitely energy of some kind, but how it made things mutate or killed you, May really didn't understand. They hadn't bothered to explain that in school, all they'd done was tell you to stay away from it. Not that that was particularly possible anymore, or even back then, but public schools weren't exactly known for being educational in any real way. May didn't even know where they were, unless they stumbled upon a specific souvenir shop or a gas station with a section aimed at tourists. May knew they were closer to the ocean than they'd started out, but other than that, May had no idea which way they'd been traveling. Mostly, they just followed the easiest places to walk and find food and shelter, whether it was abandoned houses or places out in the woods that were dry and safe from random animals. Sometimes, May wondered what Mim's life would have been like if the war had never started, if the bombs had, bombs had never fallen, but May always shook herself back to reality after a little while because there was no point thinking about things like that. May couldn't hop between universes like the characters on TV, or fly away with a random time traveler who would take Mur on scary but meaningful adventures. All May could do was try to survive, even when it meant lying awake, listening to the rain and the thunder and lightning, wondering just how safe it really was to be sleeping on a stack of wooden pallets in a thunderstorm.